This is a quick look at um, my green roof. Um, if you follow me on YouTube or see my previous videos, um, I've done a little bit of a series of videos on this uh, green roof that's got sort of soil feeding stations uh, for, for worms for increasing the sort of soil fertility and adding a little bit more uh, biodiversity to, to the roof. What I've done here, I've just picked up some, some worms just uh, from the compost bin and I've just added those to the top. So they're uh, fairly lively and they're quite big it's, and what they're going to do is you, you can just see there's a, a plastic uh, surround here is one of the feeding stations and what I'm trying to do is as I'm raising the material I'm kind of sort of a bit well it's not really landscaping but I'm just planted up around it so the idea of this will just be a lid and then the, the worm worm will be sort of buried into the green roof underneath. So. What I'd like to show here is, because um, I'm adding lots of uh, timber, this is just driftwood and then some bark from uh, local wood. Um, local bylaws, you, you can actually collect a, a certain amount of timber. Um, no, nothing larger than um, th three feet and nothing wider than uh, two inches diameter. And there's a certain amount of weight, but I only take a sort of few bits. And what I'm doing is um, when I find sort of bark that's got some nice uh, fungi on it I'm just adding that into this just to create a bit more of a sort of fungal habitat as well um, mosses and things like that I'm adding so they're starting to establish as well which is quite nice but what I notice here these um, these big uh, jelly ears or the sort of wood ears fungus which is quite interesting to look at and um, what's quite nice as well there's a, a, a range of sort of habitats and, and Kind of conditions for different plants so these are drought tolerant plants but obviously you've got the moisture trapped into the the, the wood there so that's sort of creating a little sort of a mi sort of microclimate almost and then i've got the sedums and what i've noticed that the sedums have got this really nice um, bright green new growth so where the conditions where the wood is starting to break down it's actually making a nice sort of mo bit of moisture around here and um, i just noticed in the last couple of days um where is it yeah, there's more of these little jelly ears, the little uh, sort of wood ears, fungus growing through as well. I've got some old pine cones because what I thought is um, when it's dry, the, the roots get into there and then the moisture gets in and then it sort of retains that moisture as it breaks down and it makes like a little planting pocket for the plants to start to colonise, which is quite good. Uh, what I'm trying to do here, because this is uh, mounded up, so if you can see the, the green roof itself is only about three inches deep and all this material on top is all, all mounded up so that's all sort of recently added so it's given it another sort of 10 inches of sort of potential soil depth and um, in here this is one of the, the containers here there's another one here and there's one up here I've just loaded that one up so it's quite tall and then there's a so in total there's 10 so there's one two three uh, three rows of three and then because of the, uh, the spacing I didn't have I wasn't really planning on doing this from the start so I just added them where and when and I've got an, a tenth one in there there would have been another space for one in here but I don't know I might add one on yeah probably will at, at some point I think they're really successful so what you've got here is um, this is about four uh, four inches deep so about 100 mil deep but then underneath there there's an equal amount 100 millimeters of, um, sort of potential worm habitat so what I do fresh kitchen scraps and then I just put that as a newspaper shredded paper cardboard and then alternate between food scraps and cardboard there's not enough uh, volume to get any problems with it overheating like in a hot compost bin and what happens is as that material starts to break down you'll get the habitat for the worms in the various layers and then as it sort of progresses then you'll get more more worm casts and what I'll do is then I'll actually harvest that but by then you've already got the the sort of um, radiating out you've got that soil life so what happens is it tends to speed up as the, the more diversity of sort of fungi and, and worms and detritus, detritivores and things in the soil that the, the soil can process uh, organic matter much faster so this was a, a green roof I planted um, it's probably about five years old now but it was looking a bit sad the, it was lots of gravel and vermiculite and perlite and all the organic matter had kind of been broken down and all those plants were were doing okay they, they weren't really sort of thriving and uh, 
during the summer they're, they're drought tolerant but they were just surviving rather than really flourishing so that's why I sort of thought I'd, I'd revisit this a little bit with the soil feeding stations. And you don't really need a very high fertility for these plants, they're sort of alpine plants so they grow in fairly impoverished soils but if you want them to, or especially if you want to propagate from them and take cuttings and then allow them to spread then it's quite a nice way of um, just boosting that, that sort of soil life and the the soil retains moisture but what also happens is it, it, it drains as well so you get really nice conditions so a lot of plants they say they do need a kind of moist free draining soils which sounds like a bit of a contradiction but it just means you just want that that aerated soil with plenty of worm activity and this is on a, a garden store so it's actually elevated so it's a garden store made from uh, off cuts of um, fencing and reclaimed gates and scaffold boards ripped down the centre to make the framework for it and then I just bought some some wood for the, for the fascia here obviously that that wood I think it may have a damp proof membrane inside but that will break down but in a way I'm kind of looking forward to, to it breaking down because it just means there's that much more soil life in there and underneath there there's this damp proof membrane and then a, a sort of um, weed membrane which I use as a sort of filter well, not, uh, initially I was using it as a filter barrier because I had a sort of um, gravel there because I was sort of thinking about drainage but there's a little gap here and that the, the, any moisture drains but because you've got that much more depth of um, substrate there when it rains if you have 50 mil of rain it will pretty much sort of soak in and obviously the more soil life you've got in there the more aerated the, the compost is the better it will sort of hold into moisture it won't just run off when it rains but I, I was just interested in seeing all the sort of uh, all the fungi kind of growing around here and in contrast to the sort of drought tolerant plants so you've also always associate sort of fungi with sort of moist sort of damp conditions but what is nice is you've got the various sort of um, little zones so this wood here is really really moist so that's doing well for, for the bigger succulents as well but then the other plants can colonize over the surface where they haven't got any soil so they're just making basically their own soil from whatever organic matter lands on there and starts breaking down mosses and sort of when they start growing and and dying off and dying back in in the sort of summer when it's a bit hotter but yeah so there's all sorts of little uh little sort of um fungi coming up here and there's in the moss and as you can see the little um sedums are growing into the moss as well which is quite nice and then even the little tiny bits where it's been cut back are all growing back I just think it's quite interesting and uh, um, what I have done as well I just added some some of these you're not going to be able to see but there's some canes up here and there's a big old spider up here I don't know if it'll show up on the camera can you see him? not really yeah just in the middle there and he's already caught about five or six of these little compost flies so, so what I thought I'd do because there's a there's a few they're not a problem um, and if they are a problem what you can do is just put more newspaper on top of the soil feeding stations and then that will sort of stop them coming but um, I thought it's quite good because it adds a little bit more again biodiversity and then obviously the spiders are going to be sort of predated by birds and things like that as well so that's quite good and there's another little spider up there they just had their web on a pathway so I was constantly walking through it and they were constantly rebuilding it and I thought well I'll just uh, get the cane wrap his web around it and then I relocated him a little bit and then within five minutes he'd already spun another web so yeah just goes to show but um driftwood and things um, bits of brick got some beach glass and things like that shells sometimes even old snail shells are kind of work in there because i think they'll break down in the soil as well and birds will potentially get calcium from that as well i don't know but the pine cones are really good i got those from a i don't know a garden i visited that a big pine tree and then these are just um, oyster shells bits of rock bits of stone just to kind of make a retainer so in a way I'm sort of trying to terrace this a bit to get a bit more depth and what's quite nice as well even though that's only that wide it's sort of you've got a sort of vertical element as well so it gives you more planting space and the more planting space um, I noticed there was some uh, some of the sort of um, little ground sort of not sort of hunting spiders that were 
getting some of the compost plasma and settling as well, which is quite interesting. I think they just have little tiny webs spun between the, the stems of the plants. Obviously, wherever there's there's flies, there's going to be potential spiders as well. Even on this, um, on the woody is there that you've got got spider webs spun between. So I'm trying to get more of a I don't know what sort of habitat it is really. It's just more of a diverse habitat rather than any particular habitat. But I've always been interested when you're sort of um, walking in really sort of um, moist parts of the country where they have a lot of rainfall. Um, North Wales and places like that where you walk through old quarries and they've got all the sort of rock faces and they've got natural streams sort of keeping everything really really wet and damp and um, they'll have all the mosses and, and ferns and some of the mosses are really quite deep as well so they're actually quite sort of three-dimensional and I'm always fascinated by the sort of wildlife and the, the habitat you'll get in those little spaces so I'm sort of trying to recreate that it's sort of quite a small scale but I think it's, it's interesting, it just goes to show what you can, can create just by basically adding organic matter and then creating that that, that habitat for, for soil life to colonise and then once you've got the soil life there then you've got the plants and then all the other kind of habitat for wildlife as well. And these are just... Uh, the Sempervivums are monocarpic so they flower and then they, they put up this seed head and then they, they die back but what is interesting because they grow in very sort of sparse soils the old plant becomes compost so the new plants will colonize that space so if you imagine these are growing over rock face every every year after a sort of spring summer when they flower and they die back then the other plants will be able to colonize that space so they're building up a little depth of soil you can even see here so those sedums here will colonise in that space and then that break down, fall down and then the plants will grow over that. So any rocks and wood and stuff will eventually obviously sink down. But it's that organic matter that's laid down every year on top that provides the, um, well, provides the topsoil. It looks a little bit, because um, I've just done quite a few cuttings as well, some of these plants are established, some, some are trimmed right back. They're getting a bit woody, so it's, it's it's quite interesting. But I just noticed all the new growth and the, especially where the uh, the fungi is. So it just goes to show there's something happening there that's uh, causing those plants to thrive. And also, I don't know if it was the fungi was from the um, timber in the woods or if that's just been established and it's just sort of come come to fruition. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite, I think it's fascinating. Um, what I did notice as well, some of the uh, because what I've done here is there's almost elements of hugel culture because these are sitting in a cut down collar and the collar sort of supports the, the substrate from collapsing in on itself when you lift these up and um, I put some logs which were really quiet had a lot of fungus on them in the, the feeding station there so because you've got fresh feed fresh um, kitchen scraps and, and food waste it's got a very high moisture content so that moisture was being wicked up into that surrounding wood and then in a way that was helping to, to the, um, the fungus to, to, to grow and thrive because it's creating those that, that those damp conditions without the kitchen scraps the, the wood would tend to dry out and it would take a lot longer to break down so you're creating a little micro climate so really you're, you're working with nature but you're trying to sort of speed it up a little bit as well so it's uh, yeah, it's it's fascinating, but um, yeah, it just goes to show what 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 happens fairly quickly though once you've got the right conditions. And these are more sempervivums here, so they're sort of spreading out. I got the bigger succulents. This was quite nice because it's um, it's quite fast growing, so I thought the roots will knit this little sort of um, vertical part together. And see how that sort of grows that way. And um, this side as well didn't have much going on, so what I've done here, I've just got layers of um, bark, and I sort of terraced it with the bark and layers of moss, so I've, I've, and then some logs. So it's already sort of knitting together quite nicely. And then um, what I might do is just those collars in here, I might raise those up a little bit as I've got a bit more depth, and then that will start to cover up. The, I didn't really want to see that dark black plastic edge but not really too too bothered about it obviously when the um, material is starting to, to break down that will set, sink down a little bit as well and I've just got some holes in here so you can just uh, lift them up I'm not going to lift them up any 
just yet. They've they've been lifted up, and I've got video and photos to just show how it's uh, working. But once again, thanks thanks for watching.